I'm Richard Everett, I'm at Warwick. This is joint work with Evis Karema, uh, University of Reading, and Thomas Thorne, who's sitting at the front here from Surrey. Um, okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first introduce something about ABC. How many people in the room know what ABC is? Okay, everyone knows that. Brilliant. Almost everyone. Um, so I'll go relatively quickly over that and then we'll move on to these, uh, the contribution here, ABC SMC squared. So um, set up here, sorry, this is, is, is quite small. My, my writing on the slide is quite small, is that we've got some unknown parameter theta. We've got some observed data y. We want to know about a posterior pi theta given y. And we've got the f sub theta of y is a model for the data. OK, um, so if we've got such a model, then, of course, our standard approach might be something like Metropolis Hastings. We draw a theta. Um, we look at the acceptance probability. Um, uh, thank you. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah, we look at the acceptance probability. Um, so we're going to propose a theta and we, we look at evaluating the prior and the likelihood um, to uh, see whether we accept the new point. And there are a number of different models where um, so, what, sorry, I, I missed the point, which is what happens if we can't evaluate this model point-wise at theta, okay? So this is, of course, the, the motivating setup for ABC. There's a bunch of different bio-inference type models where this might apply. This one's in neuroscience, uh, where we have uh, models for brain activity evolving over time. Um, so the parameters might be like how uh, information is exchanged between different type groups of neurons. And we have a, an, an SDE model, for example, that might give you kind of a, a way of modeling uh, what data might look like from a sensor placed on the head if you're using one of these models. OK. Um, another model is the, a duplication divergence model, which is a model that uh, Tom here introduced me to, a model for networks, for protein interaction networks, where um, uh, the, the model is that um, to make uh, an appropriate network for these, these protein interaction networks, you, um, it's th these kind of network models that grow based on a starting point. Okay? So this one would take an initial seed network and then it would pick a node to uh, duplicate. And then there's a chance that you keep the same edges that the current node had. And there's also a chance that you link back to the node that you copied from. Okay? And you grow a network by that way. Uh, another one would be in population genetics, where we're interested in something, we observe some DNA sequences and we're interested in maybe um, selection or recombination rates of the organism that produce the uh, DNA. Um, but the kind of elephant in the room is that, uh, as well as any parameters that we're interested in, the, um, we also have an ancestral tree that gave rise to this data, which is kind of awkward. Um, that's another, another model for a completely different situation. And another one would be an individual, in, another one I've looked at is an individual based model for animal populations, okay? Where you, um, you're interested in, this one's modeling populations of fish, and you're interested in um, uh, certain parameters about uh, how the fish interact with each other and how they reproduce and what the rates of this are. And you have a model where you model what individual fish do, or individual or groups of fish in this case, actually. And you might be interested in these, these things. So all of these models have the thing in common, so that they're quite easy to simulate, OK? But they're kind of quite complicated models, OK? So your collaborator, uh, if, uh, speaking to someone from statistics, working with someone in life sciences, they might come to you with a model and say, look, I can simulate from this model, OK? So what you do in that case is use, um, or what you can do is use ABC. So the ABC MCMC algorithm, the analog of the, uh, um, the exact method that I just talked about, would replace the evaluation of the likelihood with um, a step where we simulate from the model. And then we have some kernel that tells us, that kind of gives um, good scores to cases where simulations from the model for this set of for a certain set of parameters look like the real data, okay, and so that's ABC as everyone in the room said they know, and that's the MCMC version of the algorithm. Okay, so um, 
so why do why is ABC problematic <laughs> in some cases? Why why does it not give very good answers? Why does it take a long time to run? Um, anyone who's implemented this will be familiar with some of these issues. Okay, well. Um, Here's a kind of fundamental thing about the algorithm. Um, uh, what, what I've done here is I've just kind of rewritten what was on the previous slide. This is the acceptance probability you end up using. It's got the priors here. It's got the ratio of the proposals that you always have in Metropolis Hastings. And it's got evaluating whether the model is any good on uh, the, the simulations are any good or not. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from this representation of the acceptance probability. What's happening? What's happened here is that I've just reintroduced the bits that cancelled to get the result on the previous slide. Okay, what's actually going on here is this is an algorithm on a joint space of theta and x. Okay, and the in every step of the algorithm we're drawing a theta from some proposal and we're drawing an x from the model. Okay, and then this acceptance probability follows from the proposal distribution on the joint space being those two steps those two bits combined. And what happens, of course, is that these bits of the model cancel, which means we never have to evaluate f, which means that we're happy and we can implement the algorithm. Okay. But this kind of highlights why this algorithm doesn't work very well if you just implement it in the simplest way, because what we've got here is we've got a Metropolis Hastings where we might design this proposal really, really well, but this proposal on the, these axes is, always has to be the model. Okay. And if the model is not giving you things that closely match the data every time, then this is going to take a very long time. This is going to be a high variance MCMC. But we're kind of forced to use that proposal because it's because of this intractability. Okay. Right. So, um, so this gives rise to these problems in ABC. So let's focus on these last two, the bias and the variance. So what do people do to get around the fact that we're forced to use this proposal? Right, using this proposal gives you a high variance algorithm. What do people do to try and get around that? Well, typically introduce some bias. Okay, so um, here two ways you can introduce this to to make the variance lower but the bias more is to make this epsilon bigger. Epsilon is like the measure of how close your simulations are to your uh, to your observed data. Okay, if you make that smaller. It's more accurate, but there's more variance because it's harder to match things up. Okay. The other thing to do would be to take some summary statistics of the data and have a look at how close the summary statistics are instead. Okay. That also introduces some bias. Um, so, um, so, so this kind of bias variance trade off is at the heart of most ABC approaches. How do we, uh, how do we mini kind of minimize both of these things and get some accurate results? Also, something that people have written a lot about in ABC is how to explore the parameter space. There's a variety of different methods. I've shown you ABC, MCMC. We're going to come on to SMC in a minute. Okay, so so what is our way into um, helping out with this problem? So this re relates to the first paper that I linked to on the first slide called a rare event approach to high dimensional ABC. Okay, um, so this uses an idea that's been floating around for probably 10 years or so now. Um, and so this, this step is not new, but um, not always used, um, which is a re to reparameterize your simulator model. Okay. So um, the simulator can almost always be um, decomposed into, in, into, a, into a different form. So what you do, instead of just simulating from F, you reparameterize it, so you simulate theta, then you extract all the randomness out of the model, okay, and call that u, and then take the thetas and the u's and do a deterministic transformation, okay. So all the models that I described, you can do that, okay, and I'll come to mention that how you do that in a couple of them in a second. But then once you once you've done that, this part of the target distribution that is awkward that has this f in it then disappears. Okay, so we're going to keep the K here. So we're going to keep the ABC ness about comparing the simulations with the observed. Okay, but we're going to, um, because all the randomness is in this tractable distribution, U, uh, uh, sorry, phi of U, these random variables that we've extracted. 
then the target distribution changes to just being this, where this part is tractable. And this part here, this h of u and theta, is how you get an x. OK, so h is the deterministic transformation. So we've still got an ABC star likelihood, but the intractable f is not present. OK, so as soon as you do that, that unlocks all the other Bayesian inference machinery, machinery you, might, you might use. OK, so the restriction before was, of course, we had to use f for proposing x's. But now we don't have to do that anymore. OK, so then that, there's all sorts of things you could do. OK, you could explore this theta comma u space with HMC or something like that. OK, some efficient method um, as available in various packages. OK, why might this help us? Well, let, let's just think about the intuition here. Well, before in ABC, we, we pick a theta and then we just simulate from the model and hope it works. We do that independently for every theta. What we could do now is to kind of tailor the randomness that's in the simulator to the theta that we've drawn, OK? And, you know, you could think of schemes that, that update these things jointly and then maybe update, only update you sometimes so you keep the good randomness that worked last time, those kind of schemes, OK? Um, so how would that work in neuroscience? So, so in an STE type model, so here's the Fitzhugh Nagimo model. I think I copied from one of Massey's papers. Might look familiar. Um, uh, so if you were going to do a, a simula simulation from this, suppose we're going to use an Euler scheme that Massey might say is a bad idea, but let's do it anyway, OK? Um, what, what we'd do is we'd simulate some Gaussian random variables, OK? At each step, what would the simulator do? Well, it takes the current point, it would use simulated Gaussian random variable, simulate from the dynamics, right? We could just pre-simulate all of those Gaussian random variables. OK, that's all the randomness there. And then after that, all we have to do is apply the, the dynamics at every step, which is a deterministic function. OK? Uh, in this duplication divergence model, so t uh, Tom's previous work on this showed that the actual, the, the, the main, the randomness that really matters in this example is the seed network. The seed network completely changes what kind of networks you get. OK? So what, the way that we're going to formulate this is that we're going to have the seed network as being the u variables, the random bit that we, we want to kind of uh, vary. And then all the other um, rest of the process is conditional on that. In fact, there's a bit of extra randomness in there because of this choosing which node or whatever. But let's just gloss over that for now. That turns out not to be a problem. OK. Um, and I'm not going to go through the other two models, but I will refer to them at the end. Right. So. How are, we going, how are we going to construct an algorithm, bearing in mind the time? How are we going to construct an algorithm um, that is going to use this, this reparameterization to our advantage? Okay. Well, um, the first idea um, is in the, the 2018 paper I referenced at the start uh, by Dennis Prangle et al. is to, um, is to look again at this acceptance ratio, and I've just rewritten it out in a different way again, OK? And to notice that this is a pseudo-marginal algorithm, in that what's happening at every step is that we have, for each theta, an important sampling estimator of some likelihood, OK? So this is an important sampling estimator where we propose from f, and we, our target is f times k, OK? And then we have the reverse in the, denom in the denominator. So if you've got an important sampling part within a, uh, a, an MCMC, swiftly on the heels of pseudo-marginal methods followed particle MCMC methods, which instead of using an important sampling method for evaluating this, uh, uh, estimating this likelihood, use a particle filter or an SMC algorithm. Okay? So the 2018 paper talks about essentially using particle MCMC on, for ABC. OK, where we're making use of this, de this reparameterization in order to um, uh, construct the algorithm. So what this looks like in practice is, so we're skipping through a few um, details here, is that for every theta, rather than just doing the standard ABC acceptance probability, you run an SMC algorithm to, that starts at this um, distribution of all the random variables. This is conditional on theta, right? 
So we, we start with these random variables and then we're going to walk them towards through an SMC, this target here, where that should say K. Sorry, I haven't changed that. Where we've got, we've got the ABC kernel times this distribution. Okay. So it's going to have like a, an SMC within an MCMC at every step. Okay. And that works well. Um, see results in that paper. Um, I mean, what's, what's happening here is that, um, the, the, in an important sampling estimator, these, these black points are like RIU variables, okay? For, um, uh, sorry, how many minutes was that? Five, cool. Um, these, these, U, these black things here are RIU variables, okay? And this box here is meant to represent, well, the circle here is meant to represent the distribution from which they're drawn, okay? In standard ABC, you're looking at um, estimating essentially the, the area of a circle here with points drawn from this bigger circle, okay? And if this area here is small, then this estimator is going to have a, have a high variance, okay? Um, so the idea in this, with this SMC method for estimating the likelihood is that you instead take the U points and you, have, you reweight them, so these ones on the outside would die and you get, keep the ones in the middle, but then you resample and move these points. So you get a new population of points. And then if you need that to estimate the volume or the area of a smaller circle within here, you're starting from a much better point than you were when you started with these points here. Okay. And someone, when we posted this on the archive, someone pointed out this looks like a smiley face and I can't unsee that now. Um, um, right. So, okay. So that's, with the last few minutes of the talk onto SMC squared. The idea of the SMC squared al algorithm is just to do, um, embed this SMC estimator of the likelihood in an SMC algorithm rather than an MCMC algorithm. Okay. The advantage of using an SMC algorithm, an SMC algorithm on theta space, this is right to explore the values of the parameters. Advantage of doing that in ABC is that you can start with a, uh, a tolerance, this epsilon that judges how close you can be to the observed data, really big, okay? And get a population of points and get a good population of points. And then what you do is squeeze this epsilon to be smaller and then you um, kind of update your population of theta points. Uh, um, and the so usually in ABC SMC, this is very popular algorithm is to just do that kind of important sampling estimator of the weight at every step. But what we're going to do is embed an SMC within the SMC to estimate the likelihood. Okay. And so I haven't got time to go through this. There is some kind of video on YouTube, I think, where it steps through these with, without commentary, though. Um, the idea is, in a sentence, probably, is that in ABC, M MCMC, for each particle, these are meant to be like each, par each theta particle has its own new particles, right? The, 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 the point is that in ABC SMC, every theta particle generates its U particles or X particles at the start, and they're always the same throughout the algorithm, okay? And so at some point, the algorithm dies because these, um, these points become, as this circle shrinks as you go through an SMC algorithm, they, it becomes really hard to estimate the area of these circles, and so the algorithm dies. Okay, in the SMC squared variant, which you probably can't see because these dots are so small, the idea is that um, although each particle ha has a bunch of points that are generated at the start, the U particles t at the start, these U particles get refined for every theta particle. Right. So as you go along, this the, as you move, squeeze epsilon, the U particles get squeezed into the right area and this algorithm doesn't die as quickly right and this is what we found in practice so this is uh, on the duplication divergence model and we ran standard abc smc and we let it choose the tolerance at which it, for which it was adapting and at some point this is the tolerance here and this is the time step so at some sort of point it won't re it refuses to reuse the tolerance anymore because uh the the estimate of the likelihood is dying okay but once you introduce this scheme where it's allowed to um, refine the u particles and get a better likelihood estimate it doesn't die as quickly okay you can get to a much smaller tolerance in the same computational time so um so what oh yeah 
And, <laughs> oh no, it doesn't matter. I was going to say that this has got lots of smiley faces on. <laughs> so it's a good algorithm. There we go. Um, right. Uh, so, uh, so what have we done here? Well, we've got an algorithm compared to ABC SMC. The likelihood estimator doesn't die. It can go to much smaller volume tolerance values. And um, so, so there's kind of an advantage there. Uh, maybe just to revisit those models. I, well, okay, maybe I should just reinforce this point. Using this reparameterization makes ABC sampling into a standard sampling problem. Okay, so we can use whichever algorithms we want. This is an SMC squared algorithm. Um, it works pretty well. I'm sure there are others that will also work well. Accounting, we do have to account for the fact that this U space could be extremely complicated. So just to revisit those other two models that I skipped past, the coalescent model in population genetics and the individual based model, let's just think about how they work in this framework. Well, it's interesting because one of the original motivations for introducing ABC in population genetics was avoiding having to explore the space of all these awkward extra variables that we had to generate, i.e. The, the tree. Right? So in fact, what we're doing here is reintroducing all that complexity. Right? So, so maybe there are some models, there are some models where this isn't a very good idea. Okay? And in, uh, parameters that don't really influence, that, that we can simulate without really influence, that aren't very, where well, the posterior isn't going to look too different from the prior, we, we, maybe this approach is not a very good idea. The other case where this could be a nightmare is individual based models, right? Let's think about all the randomness that we have in our individual based models. We could formulate a model like this, right? Every fish that's born has its own parameters, etc, etc, etc. It would be a very complicated trans-dimensional space. Uh, probably stick to Darren simulation type approaches for that kind of model. Okay, right, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Question or comments? Yeah. Uh, this is incredibly uh, interesting, and uh, I was wondering, do you do resampling, or how do you fit resampling into the into the whole scheme. Yeah, so um, so there's a resampling on the inner SMC algorithm, um, and that's triggered, you know, with the usual um, if the um, effective sample size of the population gets too small. And there's also an external resampling as well. And I'm using um, probably systematic resampling or something like that. One of the ones that isn't rubbish. Um, uh, yeah, so, so there are those two resampling steps. Um, so all of the yeah all of the usual stuff that you would do in the outer algorithm in the ABC SMC remains the same, um, except that the weight complication is much more complicated because it involves calling another algorithm. So yeah, does that? Right. Another question would yeah. be uh, why resampling doesn't doesn't resolve this uh, dying particle uh, problem. What say again? Sorry. Why resampling doesn't address the dying particle? Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so it boils down to this picture that you can't see. Okay. Um, so, so, so suppose that we so that these are two particles. Okay, and they each have their own their own u variables to estimate the or x variables to estimate the likelihood. Okay. Um, so suppose we've got a population of a thousand of these or something, then the um, when we s squeeze down the um, this what what's happening each step of the SMC is we're squeezing this the, this red ball in the middle to be smaller, right? And the so, so the and the the likelihood estimate is the ratio of the things that fall in the ball compared to the total number of particles there. Okay. So even if we've got a thousand of these or 10,000 of these or whatever, the, um, the algorithm will always, each of these thetas will always estimate the ABC likelihood with that proportion of the black points that fall in the ball. Right. Now, as that ball gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it gets tiny. And in the end, none of these black points will fall in the ball. Okay, 
And even when we simulate a new one with MC MCMC step, it will come with its own population of black points that are drawn from the square. And so in the end, this algorithm just will end up with none of these in the ball, and the it will refuse to reduce epsilon further because otherwise the algorithm would completely die. Yeah. However many times you resample. Makes sense. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any more comments or questions? Can I have a comment? Yeah. Uh, so I completely forgot to mention something. So this algorithm looks like a nightmare to code up, OK? And so I've been working on that. And uh, so I've got some code on GitHub. Uh, it's called I like, OK? After the stealing it from the program of the same name. So um, and that should allow people to use this, OK, without having to go through all the messy implementation. Um, Disappointingly, if you Google GitHub I like at the moment, it will, it will come up and it will say you can implement important sampler if you want. And it doesn't say you can implement this. <laughs> so I'm working on bringing through so all these algorithms are interfaced. So yeah, it's not there yet, but um, look at, I'll post it on Twitter and etc. What languages you code? So it's, it's, uh, most of it's written in C++. It's, uh, it's an R package. If you happen to have written your likelihood simulator, etc. in C++, it will run very quickly. You can also call simulators from R in R, Julia, and Python, but it would be much slower because it's all interfaced through R. A job for the future is to make it so that you can call it from other languages as well, so you don't have to go through R every time, but yeah, later. <laughs> okay, so let's thanks uh, Richard again.